Hello friends, welcome to this special edition of Moments with our Good Shepherd. Normally I'd be continuing our study of the Ten Commandments, but I thought I needed to address the situation facing our world today, I'm talking about the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now this isn't going to be a political diatribe, and I'm not going to be offering any political solutions. That's not the purpose of these devotions. Rather, what I want to talk about is what God's purpose may be behind such violence and again, behind war. And I say may be behind because nowhere in the Bible does God talk about the invasion of Ukraine by Russia and what his purpose is. And so we need to look at other places in Scripture where God talks about what he is doing through violence and war. Now, the prophet, prophet Habakkuk had an amazing conversation with God about that same thing. As Jerusalem was being sieged by the Babylonians, Habakkuk asks God point blank, what are you doing? Now, don't think, as some do, that God is some vague, weak spirit so far removed from people that he has little concern about what goes on and he just lets what happens, happens. Scripture says that God is not far off from any one of us. To the prophet Habakkuk, God says that he is raising up this fierce army. In chapter 1, verse 6, we start reading, Watch, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that savage, reckless nation. They will sweep across the whole width of the earth, seizing lands and homes that do not belong to them. They are frightening and terrifying. They invent their own standard of justice and their own values. Now, did Russia rise up against the power of God or in spite of the power of God? No. God allowed them to amass this kind of military might, and he's allowing them to do what they're doing. Well, Habakkuk asks the next question, why would you do something like that, God? Well, don't think of God as a cruel warlord who delights in anger and violence and bloodshed and death. God always is brokenhearted at the effects of sin in this world, especially when it destroys an unrepentant, unbelieving life. Christ himself shed tears over Jerusalem and his enemies who would kill him there because in 30 short years, the Romans would destroy that city. If Jesus were visibly present with us today, he would cry over the senseless destruction on both sides of the battle lines. To Jesus, the soul of even the most treacherous enemy is far more valuable than all the amassed worldly wealth because he died for that soul. Therefore, today, let's not talk about this being God's war or a uh, holy war, but in New Testament grace, call it what it is, the effects of sin. The real war has already been fought and won. Jesus defeated sin and death and the devil. And though the prince of this world may still inf uh, inflict pain and suffering and war, he has lost ultimate control. And just as we'll see over our next devotions with the destruction of Jerusalem, there also comes restoration. We pray. Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia. Preserve them from the horrors of war. Limit the reach of selfish ambition and thwart those who overlook the suffering of others. 
according to your good and gracious will, stop this war and restore peace among the nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, join me these next few days as we continue our study to see what God's purpose is behind war.